Okay guys, today we're going to be taking a look at alternative scouting knives. Now in previous videos I have done, I've talked about uh, adventure knives slash scouting knives and today I thought I would talk about alternative scouting knives. Without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, check out the Instagram for more behind the scenes of the channel. Now let's jump right into it. Now, when I mean an alternative scouting knife, you kind of have to first know what I mean by a scouting knife. Now, in my original video talking about why I like the SE Hoogless 2 for scouting and why I think it makes a good scouting knife, I mentioned that it was a very large knife, but not excessively large. It wasn't quite machete length. It was really just a large blade. And essentially, with a large blade, you are opening yourself up to options. So if you don't have things like a saw, like a hatchet, having a large blade can make doing larger tasks more realistic. Now, one kind of alternative to scouting that I do, now that is kind of my traditional scouting setup. One setup that I do in kind of tandem or sometimes as an alternative is I will take a smaller saw, something like my little silky gone boy here, and I will pair it with a moderately sized kind of survival or multi-roll knife. And I think that's the best way to talk about it is that these are kind of, the knives that I'm mentioning in this video are really multi-roll knives. So they are good for survival at the core because uh, all these knives are really survival uh, or bushcrafting and they are able to fit into a multi-roll better. So let's talk about the knives and that's kind of the clarification for alternatives for scouting knives. Now, before we do talk about the knives, I might add that what are some reasons why you might want a smaller knife for scouting? And these are still larger knives like the SE6, like the CRK uh, Pacific. These are still larger knives, but what may, might make you want to go to a smaller knife, something that isn't quite as large as a Hoogless 2? And that primarily goes back to either weight restrictions, size restrictions, or if you are going to include alternative tools like a saw, it will kind of negate the fact that your knife needs to be as large or as capable. So that's some of the reasons why you might want to. In addition, a lot of these knives are just simply put a little bit easier to carry. Things like the Hoogless 2 are really good knives. They, they certainly do fit a scouting role very well, but the SC6, for instance, it's like this one, I can throw it on the back of my belt like so, and it is very carryable and very usable. Uh, very, it's very easy to get set up onto a rig and ready to rumble. That being said, also, these are still very, very capable knives. This one especially, I know some people give me hell because they're like, you know, you're not, it's look brand new, but, but I can promise these knives are very well loved and used. So try to use them more and uh, get some of that awesome, you know, worn looking patina, but I let it just build up naturally. And if the knife looks brand new to you, then uh, that's actually great. I like my knives to look nice, but uh, they do get worn and used. As you guys can see, I'm just getting pelted with hail. So now let's actually talk about these darn knives. So the first one like I've had in my hand the whole time, and really the one that kind of sets the tone for me is the SE6. Now the SE6 is really a survival knife, very survival driven, but it is just a great knife. It's a great design, great blade shape, length, overall length, and it just lends its hand to a multi-roll knife very well. Something that can be a scouting knife, something that can be a survival knife, something that can be just a general purpose wilderness tool. Uh, the ergonomics are fantastic and in fact I was just out the other day uh, with this knife collecting some wood as you guys see and I was using the saw and this knife alone to collect wood. So once again this is a really good application where maybe not quite for scouting but for resource gathering down and dirty having a multi-roll knife is very good. But it once again in scouting when you want a lightweight setup that is reasonably minimal and very uh, fieldable or very carryable. This is a really slick setup and my, my sheath looks a little bit messy right now with these connection points but it does really fit quite well and you know you can easily sling it on the back of your belt or even on the front of your belt in scout style carry and uh, it works just very well. So the SE6 is really number one on the list for that reason. It just balances very well with a small to medium sized saw. 
So that is the first one. Second one for me, and another one that has been pushed into multi-role use, is my Battle Horse Knives my Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore. The Battle Lore is on the smaller side. As you can see, the SE6 was bigger. Uh, the Pacific is, you know, a few inches bigger than the Battle Lore. The Battle Lore is certainly the smallest of the group, and this is probably the smallest I would recommend going for, but the Battle Lore itself is a really fantastic tool uh, that, once again, can be pushed into rolls with a small to medium sized saw that make it really fantastic that make it really fantastic for doing a wide plethora of different uh, role or tasks. So while this is probably the pretty much the smallest I'd recommend for a true to life or true to form, you know, uh, scouting knife, the Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore is very capable. And the biggest thing is due to its smaller size, it is much better at doing very small, very fine tasks. I mean, all of these knives are good, but this is probably the best one at those smaller and fine, fine toothed tasks. So that is the Battle Lore by Battle Horse Knives. And it definitely has the most kind of bushcraft and lineage of all of the tools. Okay, next one up on the list is the CRK Pacific. Now, there's a reason why this is my personal go-to survival knife, and that is because it's also my go-to multi-roll knife. Now, I will say the SE6 and the Battle Horse, uh, the SE6 and the Battle Lore are fantastic knives in their own right, don't get me wrong, but the CRK Pacific just has to be my number one just bread and butter for me. It is a fantastic knife that can be pushed into just about any role, whether it's combat, whether it's tactical, whether it's survival, bushcrafting. This knife can basically do it all. And while, once again, things like the Battle War will be better for smaller, fine-tuned tasks, this actually does a pretty darn good job, and you'd be quite surprised at how apt it is for doing a wide variety of different roles and tasks as a whole so really so really the crk pacific has to be the number one for me uh, i think this is just a really fantastic little blade and uh, or not so little blade i should say and really it is another one that similar to the se6 really lays the groundworks for alternative scouting knives because of its abilities to be reasonably compact you know this is not a small knife by any means but reasonably compact and still absolutely carrying a ton of ability with it. Not to mention, unlike the other two mentioned, it is uh, CPM S35VN, so it has a bit of stainlessness to it. So it's nice to have it in aquatic or wet environments, as you can see. Like we just had this nice little downpour of hail. Um, that it is very well suited and well apt to those types of situations and those types of environments. Once again, pairing it with any type of saw, whether it's a small or medium sized saw, really opens up a lot of cap capacity and capability to that tool. And one thing that I do like about this kind of alternative is it does really show you that, you know, you can take a large knife like an SE Hoogless 2 out and uh, do tasks with it and it takes a fair amount of skill and a fair amount of understanding of that tool. But when you add just even something like a saw, you can immediately make your primary blade smaller, lighter, more compact, and uh, more usable for smaller tasks just by adding that one tool to the roster. This is why I'm a really big fan of, you know, having a hatchet, a knife, and a saw. But if you don't have access to those tools, you know, even just a saw and a knife uh, can really make a big difference. Okay guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.